Are you starting off, John? Are we ready to go? Okay, so good morning everybody and thank you for coming this morning. Uh, delighted to see you all. Um, before uh, beginning with uh, obviously what we're here for today, I would just like to pass on the club's thanks and my personal thanks to Paul Hurst and the team for returning us to the EFL. Obviously because the team has been successful and in turn uh, that has made Paul Hurst successful and he's gone on to what he thinks is better things. Now that's that's a debate we could all have till the cows come home but at the end of the day we wish him well and thank him for uh, the services rendered. To have a manager in post for four and a half years which meant that he was the fourth longest serving uh, league manager I think is a credit to this football club and a credit to him so it's that sort of continuity that we're looking for. <clears throat> now since the departure of, uh, of Paul um, obviously, uh, we've asked the ever-dependable Dave Moore to step up to the hockey, and he's done that superbly. Um, out of the woodwork, uh, Stuart Watkiss has ably assisted him. Uh, obviously, he's a great pro. Uh, he's, he's available uh, from uh, coming back from his time in uh, India. Um, so that's enabled him to come in and assist Dave quite ably. Put in a couple of great performances there, and unfortunately, on, on Saturday, we didn't probably get our just desserts. We had an unbelievable amount of fans there, approaching 2,000, uh, fantastic support as we always have home and away. Um, and at the end of the day, we couldn't bring home uh, what we deserve, which was probably at least a draw. Um, so unfortunately that didn't happen, but I think it was a great performance by the lads. And in turn, our thanks go to uh, Dave Moore and uh, Stuart Watkins, and also Helen, the physio, who, who stepped up to uh, do Dave's role uh, in his absence of that. Um, naturally, um, you know, we've had a, a good start to the season. Uh, we've found ourselves in a really good spot. Uh, I think we're still eight. Yes. Still eight, thank you. We've got 3,000 season tickets, which is a, a, a level of support that we've not seen for a, a good number of years. So that's brilliant. Gates are up by roughly 1,000. And as I mentioned, to take nearly 2,000 fans away to Bolton uh, is an absolute credit to our fans. So. Um, uh, onwards and upwards, we're now uh, looking to move into a new regime, hence the reason uh, we're sat here today uh, with uh, Marcus Pignot to my right and uh, Mickey Moore to my left and of course Philip Day, uh, my counterpart uh, director. So we're delighted to be here today. I think it's fair to say it's the worst kept secret. Uh, there's no doubt about it. I think the bookies, the fans, the fishies, um, the media, everybody had uh, these two guys in post before we even knew it. So um, one, one arm up our back, uh, we go into the interview round and uh, you know the, the number of candidates that we interviewed, we've got to say that Marcus came across uh, head and shoulders. His passion uh, really shouts out big style. Um, he's been six years at Solihull, uh, finally got them promoted into the National League, which is an unbelievable achievement. It's not a big club, as we all know, um, but the commitment that he's shown at that club shone through at his interview. I mean, we know enough about him because, of course, Marcus Bignot is uh, a player that we managed to leverage out of that football club. And this was the first time that I got to know Marcus because... Um, I made an approach to Solihull, and I've got to tell you he was a pain in the backside, but in the right way, in the sense that uh, I went on to a counterpart, i.e. a director at Solihull, and uh, we made an approach for Marcus, uh, for um, Omar Bogle. And uh, the first thing they said was, well, Marcus deals with that, but we want to negotiate terms for a potential release. Uh, we want to agree a basis on which we can speak to the player. Well, no, Marcus deals with that. And as time goes on, you realise that Marcus dealt with everything at some <laughs> point. And um, anyway, we, we spoke on the phone, and uh, this was going back, I'm going to say, two years. I mean, we spent a year and a half getting, getting Omar out of uh, Solihull. And it was a credit to this guy. There's no doubt about it. Uh, he, he felt that... Um, <coughs> Omar needed further development at Solihull, um, he, he, he hung, on, hung on to him no matter what I said, no, no matter what money was on the table, he spoke with Omar and the development plan was to remain at Solihull whilst he progressed. And then it got to a stage where we continued to make approaches and finally after a year and a half uh, we managed to tease him out of Solihull. And I've got to say that was a credit to this man, it does show 
uh, his interest in the players, his commitment to the players, and how he can actually uh, mould players and, and bring them on. So that's a credit and, and one of one of the uh, uh, key reasons, really, why I guess we put him on the interview round to start with. It was that personal relationship that we'd uh, that we'd gained. Um, so. Uh, Marcus has, uh, has done something like um, 247 games in charge. Yes, something like that. So he's 42 years young and extremely hungry. That comes through. He's played at championship level and through the conference, so uh, he knows a lot of people in and around the game. Um, and as I say, that experience saw him promoted to the National League, which is a, is a fantastic achievement for that club. <laughs> so um, in terms of the interviews... Um, what clearly shouted out is that um, Marcus is very much community orientated and I think there will be a, a new reinvigorated warmth with the fans and, and I'm sure that will stand us in good stead and, and hopefully uh, results will come and uh, you know, it will be a marriage that the fans will enjoy and, uh, and build on. Um, he's obviously very, very keen on club development, that's at all levels. Uh, he he realises uh, the value of the wider club as well as uh, the youth set up through to the first team and the importance of all of that. Um, and of course, uh, without doubt, uh, from the time that we've spent with him, we realise he's got what it takes to take us forward. So uh, that's me uh, parted here, if I may. What I'd like to do is, is give around another 10 or 15 minutes of maybe uh, questions uh, to both Mickey Moore and Marcus and, and indeed Philip by all means. Uh, and then what we'd like to do is one-to-ones for about 15 minutes and then clearly we need to be off down to the training ground to meet the players and obviously introduce Marcus and uh, Mickey to the key staff and so on. So if you can accord with that, I'd appreciate it please and, and we'll do our best to be out of the door here for around quarter to 11. Thank you. So, questions please. Marcus, you should, your first words as uh, Grimsby Town new manager. How, how pleased are you to be here? Immense pride to be the manager of Grimsby Town Football Club. I think from a personal point of view, I've always wanted to manage in the Football League. And I know from the Football Club yourselves, um, your drive to get back into the Football League. Um, and now we find ourselves here today. In that situation, um, really looking forward to getting to work um, and embracing this football club. What you say, obviously, you've been wanting to be a football league manager all the time. It's been a long journey for the football league. You obviously started coaching relatively early in your career. Um, so to, to be here now, sat in that chair, it must be a special moment for you. It is. It's um, you know, whilst I was playing, I always had one eye on coaching and management. I always knew I wanted to go into management or coaching in some capacity once I finished playing. I was fortunate to have a really good apprenticeship at Sully Hill Moors. I mean, the six years there. What I gained in experience in those six years would probably equate to 16 years in the football league because literally you have to deal with everything. Um, not only hard negotiations, and may I say, you probably got all my cheaper, the euro. <laughs> You know, the football club, the people, um, it was really a special place and, and already walking into this walk, walking in this morning and seeing, seeing the girls downstairs, I really want to not just get to work on the training pitch and, and obviously on match day because that's where I will be judged three points on a Saturday afternoon, but for me it's to get to know the football club as quickly as possible, but more importantly the people. Um, we've met the groundsman today and he's going to be my best mate because it's important to have that relationship with your groundsman because um, I'm going to be needing the main pitch from time to time and you know what groundsmen are like, you know, it's precious for them but I'm sure we're going to have a, a real good working relationship and, and, and the girls downstairs in the office and obviously the board. That was one of the striking things um, that really stood out when I came to interview and the gentlemen around the table, obviously they're in a position of ownership and, and directors but then I could sense there was good people there and I'm a people's person um, and I'm really looking forward to this relationship. And how much are you looking forward to getting to meet the players? Obviously we know you know Omar from your time there but meeting the players and getting a grasp on what, what you've got at your disposal now. 
Yeah, I was. <coughs> I'm in a real fortunate position. Normally, when you normally you're out of a job when you go for a job. <laughs> um, I was in a fortunate position. I was already at a wonderful club, uh, which was <coughs> developing, um, and then to be approached by Grimsby Town was flattering. Um, and then, obviously, to make the move and, and to be in the position we find ourselves as well um, in a real good position um, on and off the pitch. Um, it certainly, again, I looked at it and it and it was a project. It wasn't. It just didn't feel like it was a job. It felt like there was a project um, here to be done, and, and that that really interests me as well. Obviously, like I said, the most important thing is the three points on the Saturday afternoon. But there's so much that goes on beyond that um, to make to make it work on the pitch. You can't have on the pitch success without having the off, off the pitch infrastructure, and it's got to go hand in hand. And there'll be time to time I mean, season ticket sales. Remarkable the way to put it, but you're getting that balance now on and off the pitch, um, and like I said, long may it continue. How how difficult was it for you to say goodbye to Solihull on Saturday? Difficult. Um, it was inevitable. They, you know, from the very <coughs> offset, from the very first day I walked into the football club, they knew my ambition. Um, first of all, was to leave a, a football club behind. I went there and there was one first team and another 18 youth team and I managed both of them. So it was a football team, it wasn't a football club and I can look back now um, after the six years and go, we've left behind a very good football club. Um, so hard in one way, but in another way, great. It would have been more disappointing if I had regrets, you know, and I can, Leave with my head held high. Uh, I know whoever goes in to that job um, will certainly have a, a good football club, good people to work with, and, and a good group of players. And, and going to the players here at Grimsby, we've certainly got a good squad of players. Uh, and for me, the question was asked: Are you looking forward to meeting them? I'm looking forward to getting to know their personalities and their character, their ability. Is not questioned. It's there for all you, for all you to see. Um, but for me, it's the, the characters, the personality, and the mentality of the group. I'm really looking forward to um, getting to know and getting to understand. Are you looking forward to working with Omar again? Do you think you can? No, take him on one to of my was, you know. <laughs> <laughs> Three years, and, and now I've got him again. I just can't get rid of him. And, um, but now, of course, um, listen, Omar is a special talent. But again, for me, he's a special person. You know, all through this, all through the time at Sully Moors, he was destined to go on to bigger and better things. But he had a grounding, he had an understanding. His, you know, his relationship with his dad was special in terms of when it came when Grimsby came knocking. Normally, that's a very difficult situation. But because he was so grounded, um, it wasn't difficult. He understood the process in terms of what it takes to go back in and I was in that position as well. I went from being an apprentice at Birmingham City to going into the league and, and having that part-time mentality and, and kind of understood what it took to get back into the football league as a player. Um, and I saw it in his eyes and I saw it at, every other day when we were in training that Omar was good. It was just a matter of when and he trusted in us and I was delighted he did because I, I was delighted he made the move to Grimsby. Yes, we would have loved to have got him into the Football League, uh, but at the time I told him, well, you will uh, get into the Football League with Grimsby, and I was right again. So, <laughs> <laughs> I'm not doing bad. What are your plans for this week? Obviously, there's a game on Wednesday night, which has come around fairly quickly. It's today going to be an important day in terms of sitting down, meeting the staff, uh, and putting in place the week. Um, I think out of respect and you know, the, this weekend I've had to concentrate on my previous job. We, um, they had a big FA Cup game on Saturday, the biggest game in the club's history, and my focus was on that. It was kind of ironic. We played Joville, so I'm looking at the game previous and doing my homework, and it's against Grimsby, so I have one eye on Joville, the other eye on um, so that was probably the most difficult in terms of watching the game, the analysis from it. 
and actually you you identifying a team you're going to play on Saturday, trying to work out their strengths and weaknesses, <coughs> planning for that. Well then you're looking at your own team you're going to and going, oh, they've done that well. I like, I like the look of that. And it, no, it was it was quite a weird situation that was. The 90 minute game turned into about three hours I think, of <laughs> rewinding and, uh, and watching it again. Okay. And can you tell us about your assistant? I think he can tell you about himself. <laughs> okay, <you're laughs> <okay. laughs> what would you like to know? You would have my wife. <laughs> well, maybe I can just add some weight to this. At, at the interview, um, Marcus uh, highlighted his weakness. Um, clearly spoke about a lot of his strengths, but importantly, in interview, it is useful if we can know the weaknesses. And his uh, comment was basically his, his weakness was he didn't know the FL, the EFL, ELF, whatever we want to call it these days. For me, it's still the uh, FL. And um, it basically said he wanted to bring Mickey Moore in because of the experience he had at uh, the FL level. So that was really to bridge a weakness, but at the end of the day, um, what Marcus knows is that he's inheriting a side that's done very well, got us in a good position. It's not like you're coming in and having to rebuild a team straight away. So getting the knowledge that Mickey's got um, was an important uh, link, if you like, in, in the weakness, if, if we want to describe it as so. Secondly, might I just add that um, Marcus will be living local. Uh, we're really pleased about that. That was one of his early comments, his, his wishes. So that, that, that is something that we're really pleased about and looking forward to that taking place because it, it clearly brings the fans, the club and the manager much closer together. So, Mickey, over to you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, we're all, obviously I know Marcus for over 30 years, went to school together, so um, previously to me going into Solul at the end of the uh, beginning of this season, I was at Mansfield for three years and they got back into the Football League. Um, my contract came to an end, the manager there um, inherited me because the previous manager Paul Cox me and Adam Murray took over he, he, he inherited me we had an honest conversation he wanted to bring his own staff in it was the first time he could do that um, so having been at Mansfield for three years in the football league obviously um, know a lot of league players um, and how the league works and, and managers and how managers will play and what their strengths are and, and areas where I think we can hurt them um, and obviously, um, it's ironic now that I'm working back with Marcus again because originally I was at Solly or Moors before I went to Mansfield and Marcus <laughs> took over from me at Solly or, do you know what I mean? So we've got a good working relationship and, and hopefully I can help him um, in the short term. It won't take him long to, to get to know the Football League and players and how people work and manage. John, what was the contract that other managers on? It's basically the same contract that Paul was on. Six month round. Yes, but in, in other words, it doesn't end. Yeah. Um, it, that's as secure as an indefinite contract. Um, it's better than the three years or a one year. It's a, it's a rolling contract, so there's always that security. Mm -hmm.